In this module, we will learn about X12, the most common EDI format in North America. X12 is a standard created and managed by the American National Standards Institute X12 Committee. Outside of the US, Edifact is the most commonly used standard, particularly in Europe. In order to provide structure and to facilitate the proper handling of data, an X12 file is organized into several nested envelopes. These envelopes ensure that the EDI information can be easily interpreted by both the sender and receiver's systems. The start and end of each nested envelope is indicated by a pair of header and trailer segments. For instance, the interchange envelope wraps the entire EDI transmission. Inside the interchange envelope, there are one or more functional group envelopes. And within each functional group, there are one or more transaction set envelopes. Let's explore these envelopes in more detail. The interchange envelope is composed of ISA header and IEA trailer segments. Between these you will find sender identification with ISA ID qualifier and ISA ID. So in this example, the qualifier is ZZ and the sender is ODF buyer. There is also receiver identification with ISA ID qualifier and ISA ID. So the qualifier is again ZZ in this example and the receiver is ODF supplier. Finally, there is transaction identification with an interchange control number, which in this example starts with 001. A functional group is a collection of related EDI transactions such as multiple purchase orders or invoices related to the same trading partner. The functional group envelope is composed of GS header and GE trailer segments. The functional group also contains the functional identifier code or group identifier, so in this example, it's PO, which stands for purchase order. The group sender ID, here it's the same as at the interchange level, ODF buyer. The group receiver's ID, again, same as the interchange, ODF supplier. And the group control number, starting with one, two, three in this example. The transaction set envelope is composed of the ST header and SE trailer segments. It also contains a transaction identifier code or transaction type, so in this example, it's 850, which is the code for a purchase order, and a transaction control number. In this example, it's 0001. Each transaction set corresponds to a particular type of business transaction, such as a purchase order, invoice, or shipment notice. There are three important components that make up an X12 document. Segments, elements, and loops. Each line of an X12 document is a segment, which starts with the segment ID and ends with a segment terminator, either a tilde or a new line character. Segments are like labeled boxes that hold specific pieces of information. Each segment has a name and contains details about a particular aspect of a business transaction, like a party's name or an item's price. Within each segment, there are multiple elements separated by element separators, which are usually the asterisk character. Elements are like individual pieces of data, such as a name or a date. They give specific details related to the segment's topic. You will also sometimes see component element separators, the greater than symbol, which can be used within elements to separate sections of the element. Elements without value are still present, but empty, and appear as just two element separators with nothing between them. Loops are segments or elements that are grouped together because they are all related to a similar piece of information. They are like patterns that can repeat. For instance, you can repeat a segment for different items in an order or different people involved in a deal. If a loop is used, the first segment of the loop is mandatory. Let's look at an example. In an 850 purchase order, there is an address loop, which in this example contains information about the party identification in the N1 segment. Here we have BT, which means the bill to party is ODF buyer HQ. Party location in the N3 segment, so that's the street address here. And geographic location in the N4 segment, the city, state, and postal code in this example. Some elements in X12 should be read together to make sense. One example is qualifier and value element pairs. A qualifier is a short reference describing a value next to it, providing additional context or meaning to data elements and specifying the type or format of the data being transmitted. 
They make it easier for the receiving system to interpret and process the information correctly. Qualifiers are defined by the X12 specification. Let's take a look at some examples of qualifiers and values. DP210. The DP qualifier indicates that 210 is the department number. 002-2020-0910. The 002 qualifier indicates that 2020-0910 is the delivery requested date. 010-2020-0905. The 010 qualifier indicates that 2020-0905 is the shipment requested date. BT ODF Buyer HQ. The BT qualifier indicates that ODF Buyer HQ is the bill to party. ST ODF Buyer Main Store. The ST qualifier indicates that ODF Buyer Main Store is the ship to party. One of the major features of the orderful product is the ability to convert between the X12 and JSON formats. For example, the X12, which in this case is the two lines or segments outlined in red and orange, would be converted into JSON. Congratulations! You are now likely completely confused. But at least you made it through. Learning the X12 spec is like learning a new, very difficult language. So if you're a bit lost, don't worry, it will get better with time and practice. In the next module, we discuss communication channels.